Hello, hello humans. Today we're here to talk about money and specifically gold farming in Fire Emblem Engage. I know it's a very contested issue in this game seeing as gold is given to you very rarely and if you, like me, made the mistake of investing into your regions early on, you're probably finding yourself quite short on gold at the moment. However, fear not, because everyone's favorite greedy merchant is here to save the day, this time in the form of a small gremlin child. This guide is extremely detailed on a micro level, so I'm warning you right now that it's full of numbers and precise comparisons, but I'll try to do my best to make it as digestible as possible. Also, I wanted to quickly say thank you for the massive support on my last video. It really means a lot to see the channel doing well again, and I'd like to ask for your continued support by liking and commenting on this one as well, and if you want to see more content from me, then subscribe! I also have a quick couple shoutouts I need to give before I start the video. First is to my good friend Cordellini45 who made the thumbnail. He's a fantastic artist, so please check out his social media profiles which I'll leave on the screen and in the description. The other is my friend Verve who's doing a maddening LTC of Engage that's a low turn count run. If you don't know what that means, it's kind of like the speed runs of Fire Emblem somewhat. So check it out if you want to see a very skilled playthrough that's being uploaded at the moment. It'll also be in the description. Anyways, let's talk about Anna. As with talking about any specific unit or any specific class, we have to start from the top and work our way down. You get Anna fairly early on in the game, as her paralogue unlocks after completion of Chapter 6. What makes Anna so unique to this method is her personal skill, Make a Killing, which has a percentage chance to give you 500 gold after each enemy she defeats. The trigger is directly based on her luck stat, so if Anna has 20 luck, the skill has a 20% chance of activating, etc, etc, you get the point. So, in order for us to make the most use out of Anna's skill and get the best gold farmer we possibly can, we need to maximize her luck stat as high as possible. Of course, no strategy is foolproof, and before I dive in, I'm going to give you a couple of the disadvantages to using this. One drawback of this, though, is that this strat won't be 100% consistent, and it won't completely get rolling until mid to late game when your luck stat gets high enough to be activating the skill frequently enough. Another drawback to this, of course, is that you'll need to feed Anna a lot of kills in order to trigger the skill. Doing this early on and in the mid-game might cause some of your units to fall behind a little bit, so you'll need to be able to strike a bit of a balance when it comes to this. The last and probably most important disadvantage to this is that while it can be done without the DLC, the Tiki Bracelet is the most optimal piece of the puzzle to maximizing your gold gain right off the bat. The Tiki Bracelet is available at the same time you unlock Anna herself, and I'll talk about this later, but there are multiple reasons why it's the best to have for Anna as you start this process. Anyhow, let's start with a bit of an Anna overview, because in order to start this strat, you need to understand the process that it's going to entail. Anna has the highest magic growth in the entire game, which is fantastic for a couple reasons. The first is that magic is amazing in this game and hits most enemies really, really hard, and second is because the classes we want to use to maximize her luck growth are also magic-based classes. She starts with the following growths, 55% HP, 15% Strength, 50% Magic, 50% Dex, 50% Speed, 20% Defense, 35% Resistance, 45% Luck, and 5% Build. In terms of Magic, Dex, and Speed, Anna has amazing growths, and paired with her ability, that gives her all the tools she needs to become an absolute killing machine down the line. I know this game is less growths oriented than that of Three Houses, but it'll be important once we finish calculating the growths themselves. This game also brings back class growths as well, so it's time to look at the classes that you should put Anna in. Anna starts as an axe fighter, which seems stupid given the growths that she has, and you should work to change that ASAP. As far as I remember, the first time you're able to reclass a unit isn't until after Chapter 8, where you unlock second seals in the Somniel shop. So you might need to hold off on your, your Anna strat until then. However, let's still talk about what you should change her class into. You have two options in this regard. It'll depend entirely on whether or not you have the DLC unlocked. Either way, since you have the Micaiah Bond Ring, you should go ahead and invest the Bond Points into unlocking Dagger, Magic, and Staff proficiencies from Micaiah, which is up to level 9. And you can do this in the training area where you spend a little bit of Bond Points to do that, so I hope you're not a gacha addict and you're pulling on all the Bond Rings. It's a waste, you should do this instead. This is going to allow Anna to reclass into whichever Magic class you want her to, and the Staff Proficiency will come in handy later for promoting. If you don't have the DLC, this means that Anna by default will have to go into the Mage Base class, and this will boost her magic growth up to a whopping 75%, even if it only increases her luck growth by 5% compared to some of the other classes that have it at 10 or 15%. Now I want to stress one thing. You're hearing a lot of numbers, and it seems like a small variability. She's only going to be in this class for 9 levels, so taking that 5-10% to hit in luck growth really isn't a big deal. And on average, it'll only be a one point luck difference anyways. 
I think it's far more important to maximize her killing potential this early instead, and so that's why I'd choose Mage. This will bring her growths up to 75% magic, 55% dex, 60% resistance, and 50% luck, with the rest of the base growths staying the same. If you do have the DLC though, this changes things drastically. Tiki unlocks a lot of potential for Anna. One of the first ways she does this is that she gives her access to the Martial Monk class by providing Fist proficiency through raising bond level to 6, I believe. This class is a bit better for Anna growths-wise, as it maintains the 25% magic growth, but gives you that 10% luck growth that you want to maximize. It also gives you 10% defense if you want to be a bit tankier, but like I said earlier, overly obsessing about growths isn't really a good idea. Having said that, the other major thing that Tiki gives you though, and this is a little bit ironic and it is worth obsessing over, is her Star Sphere skill. This adds a flat 15% to every single growth stat of the unit. Between Martial Monk and equipping Tiki, her final growths would be 70% HP, 40% Strength, 90% Magic, 65% Dex, 65% Speed, 45% Defense, 70% Resistance, 70% Luck, and 20% Build. Can you see how big of a difference that makes? This is Anna on steroids. Now, of course, Tiki can give this boost to any unit, so if you commit to using it on Anna, it means you're all in on money making and taking a step back from making any other monster unit in your party. You can mix and match, and even only grind Anna in skirmishes if you really want, I'll leave that up to you, but now you have the knowledge of her optimal starting build, you really can't go wrong with Mage or Martial Monk here. I like Martial Monk for optimizing luck and staff support, but Mage can be done too even if you do have Tiki and you want to go for easier leveling and kills. After that, it gets fairly straightforward and there's really only one clear way up, and that's going to be the High Priest class. For people without the Tiki Bracelet, you may have to promote to Sage until you get the Byleth Bond Ring that gives you Fist Proficiency to let you swap over to High Priest, but that should only last for a little while. You should promote as soon as possible because of the way the level counter works in this game, and on doing that, you'll get some nice little base stat boosts as well as some very important growth boosts. The magic growth will stay the same, but High Priest gets an extra 5% speed, speed to bring her up to 70% speed, as well as a whopping 30% total luck growth to bring her up to 90% luck. Of course, if you have Tiki. Sage also gets a luck boost, but it's less, and you'll be in this as a filler class, so I won't harp on it for too long. This is where you'll cap Anna's luck, and I want to take a moment to talk about stat caps and growth averages to give you an idea of what you'll be looking at. In this section, I'm going to calculate all the stat averages for various builds. It's going to be a bit math heavy, so I'll have it all visually displayed on screen for you as clearly as possible for you to see without having to think about it at all. As you can see on screen, the differences between Mage to level 10 and Martial Monk with Tiki at level 10 are pretty noticeable actually. Outside of compensating for the lower bases that Martial Monk has, Tiki also helps give you a 3 luck gap as well as a potential higher build, which might be important for doubling with tomes later. Everything else seems to be in about the same ballpark though, so if you're not as worried about optimizing the luck, at this point it doesn't really matter. But you really do want to optimize the luck growth. I'm not going to show the difference between Sage and High Priest because you should reclass into High Priest the moment you can get Byleth anyways, but the differences are pretty major if you choose to stay in Sage. Sage will theoretically eclipse High Priest in Magic, but High Priest is the superior option for money purposes. I'll show you the quick side by side of a Sage at level 20 versus a Tiki optimized High Priest at level 20 here. Without Tiki, the differences really will only be 3 to 6 points on average depending on the stat, so I'm not going to compare too deeply since it only affects the skill proc chance itself by a difference of 3 to 6% overall, which honestly isn't too much. As you can see here, she has excellent stats across the board for a unit who has been early promoted and hit level 20, most notably her magic sitting at a whopping 35, a respectable 27 speed, and most importantly the 30 luck. High Priest has a cap of 38 luck, so in order to cap this and get this build to max, you'll need to loop around once more and get 8 to 9 more levels. Or if you have the DLC, use the goddess icon or two that you've gotten so far to help move that further along, though you should have done that from the very start to get a head start on gold farming anyways, so why haven't you? Now that we're done going through the very detailed class and level up walkthrough, and I know it was really detailed, I'll go through the build you want to use for her. Luckily, this is fairly straightforward. You pretty much still want to optimize your luck, and in this game, even if it's capped, any bonus luck you have from skills, rings, or food will add on to your cap. The good news is, you don't need the DLC for this, since you'll be using Byleth. Byleth is the best candidate for this once your luck is capped, since at bond level 20, he gives plus 12 luck for just equipping the ring. In addition to that, for the price of 3000 SP to inherit it, you can also get his luck plus 12 skill and equip it on Anna for a total of 24 more luck. 
Add that to the 38 base, and that's a 62% chance of proccing her Make a Killing skill, which is almost 2 out of every 3 kills you feed her, or 1000 gold every 3 kills. Granted, this is generally late game, but honestly, that's when you're starving for money the most, and the maps have the most enemies on them, and having a killing machine Anna who also makes you money is not a bad idea at all. If you don't want Byleth on your DPS unit for obvious reasons, you can also use a Bond 20 Erica since she gives plus 10 luck at max Bond. It's a 2% less proc chance, but it lets you have your goddess dance on someone else instead, and honestly, that's probably what I'd do myself. Tiki aside, of course. If you listened to all that math and figured it was too good to be true, well, that's because it is. Upon actually testing this and leveling my Anna to get the natural luck cap, which is 39, you can see here that she has the Byleth ring, which should be plus 12, and the luck plus 12, meaning the total should be 24 more luck, but it seems like the game has capped us at 20 between the two. Good news for you guys, I wasted the extra 1k SP, so you didn't have to, I guess. So there you go, or maybe it was 2k at this point. As long as your ring and skill boost reached plus 20 total, you're good. Anyways, I think that's basically everything you need to know about making your Anna a money machine monster. Tiki also has plus 10 HP slash luck skill, but I mean, I guess you can choose that. It's 3600 SP instead of the 3000 on Byleth. It's really your choice because of the way the plus 20 cap works. The SP gain is abysmal, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. One of the helpful things I found was using uh, Edelgard, who's also a DLC bracelet. She has an XP gain skill that you can also inherit if you want to take the 3001 option and get that one sooner. There's a little bit of flexibility here, and her luck is pretty much capped at 59 or so from what I can see, so it doesn't really go any higher than that. It's still pretty good, high enough to proc a lot of gold, but that's about it. That's my Anna guide done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like and comment telling me what you think, and I'll see you all in the next video very soon. Peace.